Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I, female, 26, met Rika, 27, male, during an internship I was doing after graduating from college. He was a permanent employee at the company, and we started off as friends since he was the one I was working under. I knew we would end up staying friends, even after my internship was over, because of how well we got along, and we did. We exchanged numbers and continued meeting after, while I was pursuing my master's. In about six months, we went out on our first date, which was a hit, and after another six months began dating. Our relationship was beautiful. It was like we were exploring adulthood together and teaching each other how to get through life simply by being there for each other. I loved his company and still do, which is why I put up with so much all throughout the span of our relationship. But as you all know, we all have our breaking points and I guess I unfortunately reached mine too. It all started from the day I met Lizzie, Riker's mom. I still remember our first meeting. After about a year of dating, Riker wanted to take me to visit his parents over Christmas dinner. I baked a plum cake for the family as a small present and got them a bottle of wine, all after consulting Riker, of course. Well, the day of Christmas came, and although I was nervous, I tried to be as friendly as I could, trying to lend a helping hand whenever possible, and trying to show all the interest I could in their family tradition. Unfortunately, this wasn't perceived well. Lizzie turned down all my efforts to talk by simply just giving dry responses. This wasn't the case for the rest of his family, though, who were pretty decent to me, so I stuck talking to them through the rest of the day. Lizzie started showing her real colors when we finally sat to eat, though. She started off with small taunts about my degree, my job, my personality, my tattoos, how she expected Riker to get a decent girlfriend after his exes who were good, God-fearing women unlike me. I was too shocked to say anything, honestly. Most of the family just ignored her, as if this was nothing new, and honestly, now that I think about it, it all makes sense because that was just the beginning of the worst. It was by the end of the dinner that she finally dropped the bombshell on me. The cause behind her horrible behavior towards me. The cause called Alexa. Alexa was Riker's high school girlfriend who he had dated until the second year of college. They were on the verge of breaking up due to the fact that they had grown apart pretty much and the fact that she had cheated on him towards the end of the relationship with her now fiancé just made it another reason for their breakup. Well, Alexa and Riker had both gotten over each other, but guess who didn't? Drum rolls, please. None other than the great Lizzie. By the way Lizzie talked about Alexa, it was like she was the one in love with her, and of course, Alexa loved the attention. According to sister-in-law, she would visit Lizzie every once in a while and talk to her about religion and whatnot. It was like Lizzie thought Alexa was a saint sent from heaven because of how pure she made herself seem to be. But of course, it was all a lie. And wouldn't you all know, things just got worse as Alexa found out Riker and I had been dating. Alexa and Lizzie tried doing everything to ruin the relationship Riker and I had. From Alexa trying to seduce him to them trying to convince him that I was having an affair, they did everything they could to ruin our relationship. The fact that Alexa had her own relationship to begin with just added fuel to the fire and made me question why she was doing all of this. I mean, how sad of a person you have to be to do all of this. Well, needless to say, I eventually reached a breaking point and gave Riker an ultimatum to choose between our relationship or Alexa and his mom. Bad idea. I know, but it worked at that time. He sat his mom down to talk and the two got into a huge argument, which kind of opened Riker's eyes to how ridiculous Lizzie was being. So we went extremely low contact with them. This lasted for about a couple of years until we had gotten engaged. 
Lizzie, during this time, had surprisingly gotten calm, which led me to believe that she had become a better person since she got to reflect on her actions. But wouldn't you all know, this was just an act she put up to get back into our lives and boy, did it work. It was when Riker and I got engaged. I knew Riker would want his family involved in our wedding and it would be only fair to do so since my family was going to be just as involved. I knew I couldn't live with the guilt if I didn't invite them. So we started contact with them once again and they were on top of the moon about our wedding, especially Lizzie. She immediately got on her wedding planning mode, giving us all her suggestions and stuff. I was open to all of them because a lot of her friends were in the wedding planning business. It was a good time with her, honestly, all until she decided to pull this. Well, it was about time for our wedding. I was excited. Riker was excited when we suddenly realized that we had completely forgotten to put a down payment on the photographer. That wasn't an issue because it was a close friend of ours who was going to do it for us, so I just paid her a couple of days before the wedding and we were good to go. This wasn't enough for Lizzie, though, because when she heard about the photographer scene in passing, she just couldn't get over it. She started off by suggesting I get her photographer friend, and after declining a couple of times, she started becoming weirdly insistent. After putting my feet down about my decision, she became quiet and amidst all the last minute craziness of the wedding, I didn't really think too much about it, but oh boy, I should have because on the day of the wedding, she gets to the venue with none other than, drum rolls please, Alexa. Not just Alexa though, it's Alexa with her photography gear. The moment I see the two together, along with the old-as-heck camera in Alexa's hand, it all clicks to me. I immediately sent my sister, who is the maid of honor, over to inform my mother-in-law to get Alexa out of the wedding venue. She refuses, and I was dragged aside by Riker, who told me to just let it go, which I did, because it wasn't like I had any other option to begin with, and honestly... I didn't want to waste my energy on this stupid lady on such a special day. So, other than that, my wedding went smoothly. Everyone had a blast. And currently, we're back home for a couple of weeks before leaving for our honeymoon. This is when the real crap storm begins, though. It's right after the day of our wedding that we receive a mail. Riker and I both think it might be from some distant relative who sent us something because they missed our wedding, but nope. It's from none other than dearest Alexa. It's not a letter though, it's a bill for her services. Not only that though, this woman has had the guts to literally overcharge me two times than what my professional photographer friend did. Looking at it, I was dumbfounded and so was Riker, but needless to say, I immediately told Riker that I wouldn't be paying a cent to her and made it clear to Lizzie, who visited us shortly after the bill was dropped off to us. We got into an argument over this where Lizzie just couldn't understand why we weren't paying Alexa for her hard work. And by the end of the entire ordeal, she once again left quietly, but this time I knew her silence was always the kind you hear before a storm. And so I started looking around the house to see if there's anything missing. And wouldn't you all guess, my wallet and my engagement ring is gone. I just know it's her. And so immediately call the cops who are able to catch her at her place as she's sitting there with the wallet in her hand. But that's not it though. The moment the cops walk in, my mother-in-law faints. Now, I'm not sure if that's legit or not, but I was rushed to the hospital. So that's where I am currently, at the hospital with Riker and being painted as the villain by everyone who is coming to visit her. I don't find this outcome an inch surprising, but the fact that my side of the family do, sides with what everyone is saying, kind of leaves me conflicted. So, Reddit, AITA? It's been two days since everything happened. I decided to put my foot down with Riker and move in with a friend of mine. 
We got into a huge argument on our way back from the hospital where he went out of his way to compare me to Alexa because, of course, at least Alexa cares about the well-being of his mom. I told him then he should probably just go stay with Alexa, who is already winning in life by getting what she wants, ruining our relationship. The fact that Riker finally said what he wanted to just put the nail in the coffin for me, and I told him so. I informed him that the next time we'd be talking will be when he is ready to apologize to me and talk to me like a mature person rather than an idiot in high school. He dropped me off at my friend's place and that is where I am currently. I'm planning to visit my parents soon to talk to them as well. I will update you all with their reactions. I met up with my parents and after explaining everything to them from the start, Yes, they didn't know anything about Liz's shenanigans. They were as dumbfounded as one would expect. They told me that I had their full support, that I should reconsider everything even if the outcome would be getting an annulment. Hearing this made me feel calm for the first time in ages. I felt like I wasn't crazy for feeling like this. I have been spending the past couple of days just existing, trying to get my mind together. I did not hear anything from Riker, but from Riker's youngest sister, who I had gotten pretty close to, who updated me that Lizzie had gotten out of the hospital literally on the same day that she got admitted. She wanted to tell me something more as well, but she ended the call because she was busy with work, and right after that, I received a call from Riker. He had been sounding like he had been crying. He just told me that he wanted to meet me and I knew I wanted the same. So we have decided to meet up tomorrow at a local park. We'll update you all then. Hi all, this is going to be my final update. I met up with Riker who told me everything that happened after I left. Apparently, Alexa once again tried to make a move on him. This time it was just a silly flirting text, but a sexual gesture. I guess this was the straw that broke the camel's back for him, and he blew up at not just her, but at mother-in-law too. He also informed Jackson about this, Alexa's fiancé, and her relationship is in huge trouble currently. Honestly, after hearing all of this, I felt nothing. I had no sense of anger, sadness, or satisfaction about the fact that these women were getting what they deserved. I just knew this wasn't the life I wanted to live. I could just not get myself to tell Riker that I was now ready to get into marriage counseling, even though his eyes just screamed that he wanted me to say that, but I just couldn't. This is when I knew our relationship was over. The fact that it took this man so much time to cut off Alexa and Lizzie out of his life after they put me through so much mental torment I knew this wasn't the man I wanted to spend my whole life with, and I told him so. I told him that the moment he compared me to Alexa, our relationship was sort of over, and the tears started rolling down from both of our eyes. I told him that the annulment papers would be sent to him and simply just left. It's been a couple of months since then. I got my annulment and went on the honeymoon that we booked by myself. It was a whole experience, to say the least. Shutting off my phone and blocking all contact from Riker's side of the family really felt nice. I have been back from that trip ever since and have been under the process of moving out of our shared apartment. Even though breaking things off with Riker was heartbreaking, the ability to be myself and not walk on eggshells anymore kind of definitely makes up for it. I know I'm still young and can do a lot more and I want to thank you all for opening my eyes to it. NTA, OP, you're brave for being able to do what a lot of us wouldn't be able to do. Riker, honestly, wasn't going to change. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised if he liked all the attention. Good for you that you left him. NTA, honestly, you shouldn't have married Riker. If he couldn't understand all the advances Alexa and Lizzie were making towards him at that time, It isn't surprising that he couldn't understand it now. Regardless, good job on sticking to your guns and getting out. I won't make this long. I, 28 female, had a party to celebrate my husband's 28th birthday two weeks ago. My half-sisters, 18 female and 19 female, were invited, as was my mom. 
During the party, my half-sisters went on a rant at my mom for being a terrible friend and person to their mom who died several years ago. Their mom was the affair partner of our father. She was also supposed to be my mom's best friend. My mom hated her and my dad for what they did and refused to have anything to do with them or my half-sisters. She always told me I did not have to hate them for her, but that I had to understand she would never be their family. My half-sister's mother got sick several years ago. She tried to make up with my mom, but my mom would not go and see her, and apparently she died torn up about it. And many of her family believe she died faster because she wanted to see mom again. They had grown up together and known each other from the age of two, and they believe she truly regretted hurting my mom. A lot of anger was aimed at my mom for this. I always told my half-sisters not to drag me into that mess, and that I would not stand for them insulting her around me. They were good about that, unlike the party. I also found out they had sort of planned to gang up on her and make a public scene, because they said they had been waiting to say that stuff to her. I was furious. I told them to leave. They asked how I could make them leave over her. That their mom, I told them I did not care about their mother, and their mother was not more important to me than my own. I told them they were no longer welcome. They argued back, but were escorted out. They have tried to call me several times since. I have not answered. They have sent texts saying I'm an a-hole, and how could I abandon them like this and treat them so terribly? A-I-T-A? N-T-A, they deliberately cause a situation with the mistaken belief that your mom should have continued being besties with her husband's affair partner. That's definitely not even a little bit okay. I'm not sure how you've abandoned them just because you don't need to listen to their BS. You seem quite reasonable to me. NTA, if they were invited to your place for a birthday party but decided to use the party as an excuse just to bring up their old baggage, that's a pretty awful thing of them to do. There's a time and place, and that's not the time or place. I'm a 27-year-old male, and my friend, 24 male, and his wife have been married for three years and have two small babies. Recently, another woman reached out to his wife to tell her that a few years back, while they were living in separate states, he was in the military, they slept together. This has caused a great deal of havoc to their marriage and things have been super tense. However, the wife has been extremely toxic lately and although I understand she's hurt, she is taking advantage of this situation to get her away on everything. Most recently, she basically guilt-tripped my friend into buying an expensive cat because, in her words, she deserves it. They already have five other cats and two small babies, and not a lot of economic resources to add another expensive cat into the mix. My buddy agreed as a way to keep the peace. He's trying to save his marriage, but at what cost? She's doing whatever she wants leaving him the kids to go out late, making him do extra work around the house even though he works a very physical job, and now the whole cat situation. I told my wife the situation and how I think she's being unreasonable, but my wife says that his wife is probably very hurt and isn't dealing well with all the emotions that come from finding out he cheated. As I said, I can empathize, but this is no excuse to treat my friend like dirt. There's a healthy and unhealthy way to deal with the situation, and she's choosing the unhealthy way to go about it and causing more damage. My wife is now mad at me. She said she will take the wife's side on everything and support her in whatever she needs. He's the one that messed up after all, and he needs to deal with the consequences of his actions. She says he should give her whatever she wants. But where do you even draw the line? When will he stop paying for a mistake from years ago? This has now created a rift between me and my wife. But I don't think I'm being TA here for taking my friend's side. Look, I know what he did was awful, but two wrongs don't make a right, and she's just being spiteful and selfish, getting her way in everything she wants and guilting him into big decisions that will only hurt their family even more. Why TA? And sounds like you're perfectly okay with his cheating and think his wife should just suck it up.
As someone that divorced my cheating ex, you have no idea what she's going through or will continue to go through every time he deploys. He broke her trust. Now he has to deal with the consequences. If a new kitty helps, then so be it. However, you are 100% indicating to your own wife that this is no big deal, and I wouldn't be surprised if she starts watching you like a hawk. The best thing you can do is butt out of their business and stop taking sides. Your friend shouldn't have slept with another woman. That's just such a huge game changer. He deserves what she dishes out at him.